I'm Frank Lloyd and here's my third video tutorial celebrating my latest recording, No Limits. I'd like to help you push your own limits on the horn by talking to you now about hand stopping. In my touring around the world, I still hear a lot of misconceptions about hand stopping. So I thought it was about time that I would post a video to put the record straight and help you be more efficient in your hand stopping and to help composers write more effectively for the horn. So let's start with a little test. Basically hand stopping requires that you have a very tight hand position in the bell. It will only be efficient and work efficiently if you have your hand far enough in the bell, closing off the bell completely. There is no reason for anybody not to be able to hand stop. Um, even those with the smallest hands can get enough seal on the instrument to get a good hand stopping sound. So the first test we're going to do is is in the middle register because if you can't hand stop in this particular register then your hand position isn't in the optimal position. So let's start around here. So in this particular register if you're not really getting a nice tight and buzzy sound in this register, very close to that sound of a, of a stopping mute. The reason a stopping mute works so efficiently is because it, because it completely closes off the bell. We want to emulate that as much as we can with our hand position. The difficulty we have is that there's always going to be a part of the hand which is not going to be able to seal as completely as a stopping mute and that's usually between these two joints on the palm of your hand, on your wrist. Um, between these two bones there's going to be a slight gap here but getting the rest of it as efficiently closed as possible is the key to getting it sounding really buzzy and stable of intonation because the first thing you will hear when it's not really working efficiently is that it will it will swim a little and you will not get a nice centered note, something like this. That's an uncentered sound because this is not being efficiently closed enough. What happens is that quite often students will bend their fingers slightly so you don't get as an efficient close as in keeping the fingers straight and putting the hand in as far as you need to go to be able to close this part of the bell almost at right angles. So it's going to look like that and it's going to sound very tight and buzzy. That will show that you've got a good hand position. If it means putting the hand in further to get a seal, then that's what you have to do. If you come out too far, you won't get such an, as an efficient seal and then you won't uh, be able to get such stable notes. So now let's think about exactly what is happening when we stop the horn. Because quite often, and for many years, there were actually uh, tutorials and uh, study books um, explaining what happened when you stopped the horn and um, in that uh, it sharpened the horn. Well, we say there's two theories about either sharpening the horn, a semitone, or flattening the horn to a semitone above a harmonic below. We'll go through these two theories and then um, I'll show you some evidence in the proof of one of them. Um, the fact is, is that we all know when we, we should know, that when we transpose for stopping on the horn, we transpose down a semitone. It makes it all very easy, and if only my students would practice this, it means you have to know your F horn fingerings, horn in E, so a semitone lower on the F horn. So for instance, if I want to play a C, I finger a B. If I want to play an F, I finger 
E on the F on. If I want to play a G stopped, I finger F sharp. This will work through the complete range of the instrument, even down into the lower register if you've got a good efficient hand position. And this was always assumed to be the reason, the theory that hand stopping raised the horn a semitone. It was quite logical in a way because you finger any note and it seems to rise a semitone. But experiments were done way back 25, 30 years ago, in fact using a machine and to close the bell. And what would happen is that the note would start going lower and then would jump up to the semitone above. So you would get this. It would jump up a semitone. So this is what substantiated then this uh, theory, the, the proof of that, why it's um, raising it a semitone. I remember quite a few years ago speaking to a uh, um, wonderful acoustician and the chief designer of horns in Paxman's, Dick Merriweather. Um, he explained this to me that uh, what is actually happening is that you are, by stopping on the F horn, you're flattening the note to a semitone above the harmonic below. In most cases, the theory holds throughout the whole range other than in the low register when the tolerances just aren't enough to flatten the note down to a semitone above when the harmonics get too great. But I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so this theory is that every note flattens to a semitone above. So your C. <laughs> flattens to a G-sharp, in theory. E flattens to a C-sharp. And so on. So your G will flatten to the F. The F being a semitone above the E. Call it E-sharp, if you like. And this holds true throughout the whole the instrument. So I'm going to show you the reason why this theory, to prove this theory, because the theory only remains a theory until you prove it. When you prove it, it becomes fact. So I'm going to prove this to you, flattening the horn to a semitone above the harmonic below. Many com modern composers these days understand this and write correctly for the instrument, but there are still some composers and although it was 25, 20 years ago, there was a, um, a composer who wrote an octet that won an International Horn Society composers competition. And all of the stop notes in the first movement went in the wrong direction. So they were all impossible to play. You cannot play a glissandi to a stop note going upwards. It has to go down. So let's have a look. So take, for instance, our fifth harmonic E on the F form. So the theory goes, if we flatten that, we're going to get a C-sharp. Well, we can hear it's doing that. Yeah, we don't need to theorise anymore. We can hear that's what's happening. So we reach the C-sharp, but now what if I play that E, same note, but on first and second valves? It's still an E, but now it's not a fifth harmonic anymore because I'm emulating the D horn. It now becomes a sixth harmonic. And the sixth harmonic is our written G. So now if I stop this note, it's not going to lower to the C sharp because it's not an E anymore. It's a written G. So it's only going to stop one tone lower. In other words, a semitone above the E below. It doesn't matter what key we're playing in, the rule stays the same in whatever combination of fingers we're using. I'm emulating a D horn by using first and second valves. So this note now. Is only stopping a tone. 
as it should do, because the fifth harmonic flattens to a semitone above the harmonic below, which is what it's doing. If I play this note on the F horn, it's a fifth harmonic, and so will flatten to a semitone above the fourth harmonic. And on the D horn, we only hear that tone difference. So that's one proof. Let's have a look at another. Theory goes that if I flatten C natural, eighth harmonic, that I will be a semitone above the B flat. The B flat, as we know, seventh harmonic is going to be flat. So by flattening the C to a semitone of B above the B flat, the flat B flat, that B is going to be also slightly flat. Not much in it, but that's the reason that hand horn players, natural horn players, will know you don't have to fully stop the B natural for that very reason. It's the same reason you don't really have to fully stop the F above that um, because it's flattening to a semitone above a slightly flat harmonic. Your 10th harmonic is normally a little flat. So your fully stopped F can be also a little flat. So you can open that very slightly and still be in tune. So you don't have to pay a full, play a fully stopped um, high F and you don't, we know you don't have to play a fully stopped B natural because of that. Now you say, well, if you flatten, to a semitone above the note below, what happens when a semitone above the note below is the same note you're playing? Which happens? Because between your 15th and 16th harmonics, it's a semitone. So if the theory holds, that means the 16th harmonic should remain unchanged. So let's try. I'm going to play up to the 16th harmonic on the C horn and then hand stop the note and see what happens. So you notice you notice any of those notes, all sixteenth harmonics the high C for the C horn, and they're all written high C for the different pitched instruments. So one and three is emulating the C horn, the high C, 16th harmonic, 16th harmonic, 16th, all 16th harmonics. They don't change. They stay exactly the same, which proves the theory that the note is actually stopping to a semitone above the note below. It just happens the note below is only a semitone. But from there up, it doesn't change. Once you've reached that 16th harmonic, every semitone from then on that you play up through the range, if you ever have to play that high, they always remain unchanged. And I'll show you, if I play the high C on the C horn, 16th harmonic, and I play higher on the same C horn, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21st harmonic, you will see that they don't change. So from the C, So that's playing up to the 21st harmonic on the C horn, and you notice that there's no difference in the, uh, in the sound. The semitone are exactly the same as if I would play them all open. So this, I hope, will help you um, understand more about what is actually happening when you stop the horn. The reason we transpose a semitone lower is for ease of reading that we read a semitone lower because the resulting stopped note is always going to arrive at a semitone above the harmonic below. And this semitone is what we imagine when we transpose. We're not actually playing that note, 
we are playing the note above, but that doesn't really matter. It's the fingering that we need, which is going to help us become more efficient hand stoppers. So you will know that these days we have B-flat instruments a lot. We have double horns. We don't always play on the F horn and we don't always stop on the F horn. In fact, if you've only got a B-flat instrument, you need to have a stopping valve. Now, as stopping on the F horn is consistent with stopping a semitone to a semitone above the note below, the B flat horn also stops consistently. Um, being a modern addition to the original F horn, the way it evolved, as a modern addition, it doesn't work the same way as the F horn, but it consistently stops to three quarters of a tone above the harmonic below. So the stopping valve compensates for that. So by using the stopping valve, you can, you can uh, compensate for that three quarters of a tone difference. And in that you will always use the same fingering for the note that you're reading and you don't have to actually transpose at all. So I can just show this. I haven't got a stopping valve with me on this one, but I can show you the consistency of always arriving at a, a hand stop note three quarters of a tone above the one below, even between the, the second and the third harmonic. <laughs> we've arrived at the F, three quarters of a tone above the, the F, slightly flat G, slightly flat. And this will go, let's go a little bit higher from the So we want to flatten the F, we would want to end up three quarters of a tone above the C. So there we are between the C sharp and the D. So this is where our stopping, stopping valve will help um, do that transposing for us. Um, because the instrument, the harmonics, the intervals of the harmonics get smaller as we get higher, it also corresponds with our stop notes get wider, get, get uh, as we get lower, the difference is greater and get smaller. So like I said at the very top, there's no change at all. But so also on the B flat horn, if we get to our high C, which is a 12 harmonic, and it flattens to three quarters of a tone above the note below, which is a sort of sharp B flat, then we should be almost at the same note of a C. So let's try it. We'll play the C. Also no change. So this also shows you that uh, it's all really consistent throughout the whole range of the instrument. Now, this theory holds true for most of the instrument, but in practice, well, the theory holds true for the whole range of the instrument. In practice, it becomes not possible to flatten notes once you get below the fourth harmonic. You've got too far to go. Already with a fourth harmonic flattening to the G sharp, it's tending to want to go up. That's okay, you can, you, this will work to the G sharp, but we're getting to areas like the written A, which is very unstable. And the same reason that that written D was, was never written by classical composers because it was such an unstable note. And we all know that. Because of this, this uh, instability, instability, they didn't used to write for that. So this E to the C sharp works fine, C to the G sharp also, but from the G to the C sharp, that's too far and you'll, you will discover when you try to stop that, it starts going down and will slide up to the most convenient note, which is going to be the semitone above. Um.
So you can actually glissando slur between an F sharp and a G sharp. Because in only these few millimeters we've got left with our hand, you've got to get about four different notes, five different notes, and there's not enough tolerance for that. So it will slide up to the next note. Although you will still get a hand stopped the semitone will still hold true for even all of those notes even although in practice it's not going to it's not going to uh, work from the harmonic above although it will still be evident throughout it's important to know this in many instances and especially for people writing for the instrument who, who are still not uh, all as aware of this uh, phenomena as, as they really should be. And, and sometimes it makes for, for life very difficult or impossible for us as horn players when the stop notes go in the wrong direction. It will always have to jump, other than in this very low register where you can actually fake it, we know that in the very low register we use our lip. <laughs> That's about the only note and from there down that we can force up that semitone because of the tolerance of going an octave lower is not, to, is not there. So we need to know that we're generally flatten the notes to a semitone above the harmonic below on the F horn or three quarters of a tone above the harmonic below on the B flat horn. And if we can always remember this consistency, then we won't you're making for mistakes or making things very difficult or impossible for us horn players to achieve. Primarily, get the hand stopping, your hand position correct, because if that is not correct and not efficient, then it just won't be possible to stop effectively and in tune. There are lots of alternative fingerings which can help you and they're mainly going to be stopping to a flat above a flat harmonic, semitone above a flat harmonic like I've showed you already and that helps it be a little bit flatter if your hand position is not quite as efficient as it should be. But like I said, it should work with every hand position even if it means having to put the hand further into the bell to get the complete closure you need for an efficient stopping sound and stability of tone. Well, that concludes it for this video. I hope I've been able to give you a little more insight into this particular element of playing technique. And I'm sure that with diligent practice, your own technical skills will improve and add to your own enjoyment of playing the horn. Be sure to like and send this video to your friends. And if you would like to find out where you can purchase No Limits, please go to the links provided in the text just below this video. I'm Frank Lloyd, and until the next time, bye for now.